Welcome back. We have arrived on Riven, a very interesting looking place, written by Atrus's father, apparently, making this the first age we visited, not written by Atrus, I think. Don't actually know who wrote Mist. Actually, we do know who wrote Mist. It was his, uh, Atrus's grandmother. Anna, but that is not something you would know from just the games. Uh, we're going to check out this big room here, which again has this symbol on the floor. Wait, I originally said they looked like leaves, but if these are leaves, and these don't. They kind of look like the tip of a pen, perhaps? And that unknown symbol in the middle again. Nice little starfield ceiling. And, uh... Sputnik? Nah, that wouldn't be launched for like another 150 years. Um... I guess it could be another representation of a pen, if that is indeed the symbology used here. Um, this room has another exit. Press X to take a picture. You can access your photos through the menu. Yes, we have a way to uh, take photographs with the uh, X key. And then if we go into the menu, we can access our notebook here and see the pictures we've taken and also add notes to them. So we can say this is a strange symbol seen in many places. Just in case we need to refer to it later. If you hover over a picture, you can also see the note you took for it. It's very nice that you can do that. You cannot do it in VR, unfortunately. You can still take screenshots, but um, you can't type notes with them, which is a bit of a downside because unlike Firmament, this game is not designed to uh, complete without taking notes. So yeah, that's a bit annoying. The screenshots work, but they're not always quite enough to solve everything. Would be nice if they gave you some way to uh, to write on the pictures, perhaps, or even if you just want to keep with typing, give us a floating 3D keyboard. Lots of games do something like that. But uh, yeah, I guess they didn't have time or ability to uh, implement something like that. Would also have been nice if there was a way to access the the pictures in game, like make them a physical object rather than having to go into the menu. Although, then you would have to explain where they came from. It's not like we're carrying a camera. Unlike Mist 4. Um, besides uh, X to take a screenshot, we can also hit Z to zoom in on something. So you can sort of see the interior of that uh, big golden dome. And something in the on the top level there. Can't really make out what that is though. Can't go this way though, because there's a gate. And I don't see any way to open it. Unless it's in here somewhere. Um, there's some stuff on the walls here. This looks like it's some kind of writing. Almost looks like Arabic writing, but I don't think it is. Not that I can read Arabic writing. So, even if it was, that wouldn't help me. There's a little viewport here. Oh, that shows us the, that same smaller rotating dome that we saw before, and yet another instance of the same uh, five pen tip symbol. Oh, and there's another gate behind here that also has that symbol on it. Somebody really loves this symbol. 
Must mean something. I have no idea what this says. Can't read it, so not much we can do about it. Um, what's here? That's a cave. That must be over down that way, like in here somewhere, in this rock. And another cave. That must be towards where we started. But we didn't really see any way of getting in that cave from there. Whereas the cave on that side seems to have a door. You can see it through the through the window. Like there's a, clearly a gate over there. Um there's also these weird little statues on these wooden columns. Actually, these, these just look like tree trunks. Somebody smoothed down a bunch of tree trunks to make these columns. And put this thing on there, which again we see this what's probably a pen tip symbol. Looks like an animal. Definitely seen beetles similar to that. Or a really big ladybug. Which, you know, is a beetle, so. Um, there's a cord here you can pull. Oh, and some kind of viewport. Um, I do not know what I'm looking at here. Oh, and very nice, I cannot make the cursor appear here. So I can't point at anything. Um, there's a person at the top, five people underneath him, and then some representations of people doing various things. People in the bottom left, have, they have like a diagram and maybe that guy is holding some, a plank of wood or something, maybe they're building something. The person next to them who appears to be attached to the head of the person left of them, kind of unfortunate placement there, is giving sheets of paper with writing to children. Then there is a person uh, overlooking a bunch of other people with knives, not the same kind of knife as the big dagger or the small dagger we saw before. Then someone who is playing Tetris. No wait, those aren't Tetris pieces. Tetris pieces all have four... Four pieces and... Two of these are Tetris pieces, but the rest are not. Don't know what they are. And some kind of measuring instrument is what he's holding. And then on the right we see some people... Next to a tree that seems to have its bark stripped and leaves of paper are falling off of it. Because that's definitely how paper works. It just falls from trees. And these people are picking that up. Interesting. Let's see what else we have. Seems like we can open all of these beetles. Here we see... Another person with the same symbol, the same smaller symbol in the middle, like the middle part of the, the big pointy symbol, who is casting a smaller figure with a book into a hole surrounded by fire and water. And it looks like maybe stars inside the hole. Is that the starfisher? Interesting. Wait, the figure with the symbol on his collar is... 
The same symbol we saw on the door being worshipped. Let's see what else we can learn here. There are, there's a hand with that same symbol on it again. The top left are some logs entering a, the mouth of some device. Looks like they might be being shredded because there's like tiny bits of wood coming out. Then some big thing on the top right. A bunch of people who are worshipping a book. And trees that have all been cut down. If they're worshipping a book, that's probably a linking book. Or a religious text, I suppose. Could be a Bible. Or Quran, or something like that. But I'm guessing that's not the case. And we have what I'm assuming is again the same figure. We can't really see the symbol on the collar this time. But it is the same kind of robes. Who is writing in a book? Well, we only know two people who write books. Linking books, anyway. That would be Atris and Gen. So why do I get the feeling that this person we keep seeing is Gen? And it does seem he's writing in a... Linking book, or more formally, a descriptive book, probably. Because from his pen, there seem to be coming stars and people, and more stars. Well, the moon and stars, and a horse-like thing, and a plant, and some fish and worms, insects, another plant. Atris's journal seemed to suggest that Gen believes he creates worlds by writing them, and that Atris does not believe that is how this works. So, this may be a representation of that. But if that is Gen, then this whole thing is to worship Gen. This is some kind of shrine to Gen and his, his writing. I'm beginning to see why Atrus doesn't like this man. He seems a bit full of himself. We have one more tableau to look at, which is, again, I presume, Gen floating with a book behind his head. Also a halo, so, yeah. Wait, all the hands we've seen so far have four fingers, except for the figure's right hand here, which has five. Okay. Guess it looked right for uh, looked wrong for him to do the this uh, the two finger salute with uh, with just four fingers. And he's just floating in the sky and being worshipped by presumably the people of Riven. So yeah, this is some kind of shrine or monument to Gen. The temple we saw over there is also to worship Gen, then, I would assume. It's a bit... Uh, suspicious. More of those symbols there. Now, since the figure has this symbol on his collar, perhaps that's meant to represent him? Is this symbol representing Gen? Perhaps. And yeah, I might be making some leaps of logic here that, of course, you would know if you'd played the, or played the original. But I don't much want to... Uh, Spent the whole game pretending I don't know what this symbol means. 
Um, I don't think it's too unreasonable what I'm saying here. For you to make that connection, having read the journal. Nothing else in this room, though. There is a button outside. A doorbell? If it is a doorbell, then I don't really want to push it, because... I don't think I quite want to let Gen know we're here yet. Assuming he doesn't know already. So far, we have not encountered any opposition, other than the one person in we saw while well, trapped in the cage. There's that rotating dome again. And the uh, broken maglev pillar. I guess that would have gone somewhere here, but don't know exactly where. Oh, we can also see the back of the uh, temple room. The stained glass window from the outside. It's kind of cool. I don't think we could see that in the original. This view seems awfully familiar. Why do I feel we've seen this before? We have seen this before. This was one of the images we could see in the Crystal Viewer on Rhyme. That's what this is. Atris was using the Crystal Viewer on Rhyme to try to try and get a better view of his uh, of his father's doings, and he could with the. Uh, with the distorted linking panel. Maybe that's where he went when he left? I mean, his journal suggested that he has to keep writing to keep this place stable, so I'm assuming he came back pretty quickly. That's kind of a bummer. Because if he could just go to um, Rhyme, then a visual signal would be possible. Unlike um, with the uh, linking panel, which makes that impossible, of course. I guess he could take the book to Rhyme, but maybe he doesn't want to drag all of his supplies over there. Anyway, maybe he just didn't think of it. It's not like we can go back and tell him this idea we've just had. Um, hmm, this looks like the gate to that cave that we saw from inside the room. Yeah, we can actually see the little window we looked through up there. That's locked though. Pretty Oh my. Yikes. Yeah, that must be those tremors that Atrus is writing about. Pretty sturdy looking padlock. Weird looking key. Almost looks like a Vorlberg key. Which we don't have. Doesn't look like we could just crawl under there or anything. It's a bit low to the ground. Um, hey, somebody left another knife there. Much like the one that was stuck in the lever. And, wait, this hinge. This gate is already missing one hinge, and this hinge doesn't look like it's attached all that well. Why even bother with the padlock? Okay. 
Yeah, of course, in the original, you did crawl underneath there. The little knife was on the ground. Um, that's something that's kind of hard to do in uh, VR, though. I mean, you can. But you'd have to make the player physically claw crawl on the ground or change his view height in a weird way. So I can understand why they did not go with that there. This is a nice alternative solution. And now we're in that cave. It doesn't look like it's a very big cave. Not much to see. We can look into this room. But that's about it. And it doesn't look like we can get over there from here. Looks like that small rotating dome is connected to the big golden dome by a pipe. And this pipe in the water also looks... it's kind of hard to see, but it looks like that's also going up to the golden dome, perhaps. Before going off that way. Oh. God, or Trevor. Okay, let's hope that doesn't get worse. I feel like I'm playing Mist 5 again with all these Trevors. Tremors. Um, well, I guess the only thing we haven't tried is the doorbell. So, I guess we have no choice. Let's see what that does. Wait, what? Okay, not a doorbell. That just turned the entire room. Um, now we don't have a door here. The door that was there moved over there, revealing Another gate. Oh, that's... Yeah, we saw that gate through the little window. That's towards where the rotating dome is. But now we can't get into the room anymore. Our door would be over to the left there somewhere. We can't quite see it. That would probably connect to that other cave we saw then, but... Don't know how to get in there. There was no obvious opening there. Maybe something to do with that chimney that's blowing smoke up there? I don't know. Can we do that again? Yes, we can. Oh, that door is back over there. can't see the other door now, but I would bet that it's facing the cave now. Let's go check that out. Yes! We can get in now. Now we can look out at our original entrance through one of the windows. And this is still shut, so that didn't really accomplish anything now, did it? I have to say, I do actually really like the addition of the windows in the uh, rotating room. In the original, you could look in from the outside, but you could not look out from the inside. And adding that, yes, it makes the puzzle a little bit easier, but I think that's not really a bad thing. It gives you a, a very clear uh, signpost that there is more on the outside of the room than what you can currently access. 
and it gives you a way of visualizing the layout without having to like draw a diagram, which would be hard to do in VR and um, is also a pain for people who are less um, adept at spatial reasoning than I am. And Cyan games tend to lean very hard on spatial reasoning skills. Let's keep rotating the uh, room to see what we can accomplish. If I'm right, we should get our door back. And we did. Now we can access this gate. Which is still a shut gate, so... Still not helpful. One change that I think they should have made is they should have blocked the door somehow while um, the room is rotating because in the original it made sense you couldn't go inside because it was just a video playing. But here, obviously I should be able to step into the room. But it just won't let you by means of invisible wall. So have like a little gate that sh that shuts briefly while the room is rotating or something would have made that uh, less immersion breaking. Okay, so now we should have uh, the door over there again and presumably at the entrance of our cave again. So let's go there again. Maybe with the room in this position we can actually go somewhere. We can get back inside, so that part's good. And we can go outside now. From here. That's neat. Into the other cave. Which indeed does not appear to have any other entrance, unless you brought climbing gear and we're able to climb up to that chimney we saw that is blowing steam from underground presumably some geothermal source and then there's a pipe going outside which uh, we s is the pipe we saw before actually that goes to the machine by the that control panel by the telescope. And there's a handle here. Which seems to have redirected the steam over this way. Well, we're gonna have to see if that accomplished something. Uh, in order to do that, um, I could walk all the way around, but let's uh, see what else we can do with this room first. Um, there is a handle here and behind it that looks an awful lot like those two gates we saw. So let's see what that does. I hear something. Oh yeah, and we can see the gate being opened. So, that gives us one way out. We have to do an awful lot of room rotating to get there, though, if we go back out. There is, however, another doorbell here. So, can we rotate the room from here? We can. It's nice that we're not limited in view in this version, because... Um, the original game would force you to just look at the doorbell while that happened. Now we can actually see the room rotate from this angle. On the downside, the original game cheated a lot with the length of time that rotating the room takes when you can't see it. It took much shorter. Now we have to wait for the whole thing, and you can't skip the animation anymore. Um. That seems to have accomplished what we wanted. Now we can go out here. Um, oh, hey, there's another lever here. Gonna raise, raise the other gate? Yes, 
it is, which we can now see happening. In the original game, you could see this gate being raised, assuming you rotated the room before you lifted the lever, which I did in my original Let's Play. But you could not see this one getting raised, because it's not in view from here, regardless what you do. But now we can. Wonders of real-time 3D. Anyway, there's a dome here. That's spinning. Bunch of symbols on the outside. Huh, these plates have the same weird symbol on them as the ones over the Starfisher. These lights, is this lit up in the dark? These things, it's possible. Now I want to see Riven in the dark. Cyan, if you're watching, make a time of day patch. Uh, not much we can do with that. There is, however, something over here. We can more clearly see that pipe that goes off in the distance there. This seems to be looking at the dome, at the symbols on the dome specifically. Kind of like a Like an old school animation thing. It's showing the symbols morph into each other. There's a button on the top. That doesn't appear to do anything. Okay. Not really sure what we can accomplish here. But we did raise another gate, so. We can try to uh, go through there, I suppose. Can rotate the room from here. Sounds the same as it originally did. I don't know if they actually reused the same sound effect or recreated it. But it is very similar. And that put us back into the room in the configuration it started in. Actually, no, it did not. The original configuration, we could go there, which is what we want. We actually want to move the room back to where it was. Which will take two pushes of the button. And there we go. We are now here. Where we can also rotate the room. I don't think that was there in the original. I actually don't remember. It might have been. Which, um, we don't really need. We've been everywhere. Well, that's where we started. Oh, and we can see that steam is now coming from that machine, as well as the control panel. So, yeah, redirecting that steam valve through this pipe definitely accomplished something. We'll have to take a look at that later. And, um... 
over here is really not much. You can see the rotating dome again. We can, however, go into the um, big gold dome. It seems to be made of gold bricks, or presumably just painted gold. Very ostentatious. Everything we saw Atrus built it was never on this scale. It was always very utilitarian and functional. If this was built by Gen, which I assume it was, then he seems to have much more of a flair for the dramatic. There's more of that writing we can't read on the outside of it. There seems to be an upper level that I don't see how we can get to it. There's a lower level down here. Um, pool of water down below. Very clear looking water. Very blue looking as well. Might be some minerals in there. It's pretty uh, common with volcanic lakes and stuff, so that might be the case here. Um, some kind of machinery here. Above a book! We found a book! It has another symbol on the front that I don't know how to decipher. It's a linking book! It's a Broking linking book. The static there kind of reminds me of the prison book for the brothers. Like, is this book missing pages that we have to return to it to make it work? Can't really tell. Doesn't look broken. There's no obvious torn pages or anything. Then there's this giant contraption. Maybe that has something to do with it. Some pipes surrounding the book as well. Whatever is the case, we cannot link here right now. And I don't think I'd want to. Considering we can't see where it goes, it could be very dangerous. There's a button. Which does nothing. Is that a button? No. It's just part of the railing. Hmm. Don't think we can do anything with that right now. Let's walk around, shall we? See what we can find. It's our rotating dome. Seems like each window corresponds to one of the pipes, so that's the pipe that goes to the rotating do dome that we could see outside. It leads to the linking book in the middle. Is this mechanism here to protect the linking book, to prevent it from being used by people who aren't supposed to. It's possible, I suppose. So there's a pipe going this way. And I don't see it. But this might be the pipe that actually kind of more goes that way. We saw it going along the rotating dome. And this window, that actually looks like one of the symbols we saw on the outside of the rotating dome. Come to think of it, actually so is that. It's, uh, this one is also one of those symbols. It's just less obvious because it's just a circle with a dot in it, but that is one of the symbols. Interesting. Are all the windows symbols like that?
think they are. This one is uh, presumably that pipe that we can see over there, going towards another island. There's a structure on it. These symbols might be important. I think we should actually be taking pictures of these. Just in case. Or make a note of them, however you want. And actually... We should probably... Um, maybe make some notes if we need to. Let's see if we need to. Let's see. This pipe we can clearly see, and it goes towards one of the islands we've saw seen before. A really tall island. Alright, um, take another picture. And another one. Uh, it's looking out at um, the island with the forest that we could also see from our starting point. Hey, there's a structure on there. I couldn't really see that before. Weird little tower thing sticking out over the top there. And we did see a pipe in the water going that way, which presumably is this pipe. Let's take a picture of this one. I mean, we can kind of see in the pictures what, which way the windows are facing, so I don't really think it's necessary to take any additional notes here. Let's take a picture of this one. And I forgot to take a picture of this one as well, so let's do that. This one isn't facing anywhere obvious, so even if I wanted to take a note, I wouldn't know what to write. Facing nowhere. Um, there's also a lower level here. Um, there's two doors. One over here. And one over here. Let's go to this one first. Seems like it would be humid in here. It'd be bad for a book. And it's... that bridge we saw from the window up there. With the vertical line symbol. Here we can clearly see that the pipe from there does indeed go down into the water over to that island that almost looks like a volcano. There's more of those tracks, tracks as well leading towards that island. Those tracks go into a hole in the water over there. That's kind of weird. And then there's tracks between these two islands. This bridge is open, however. We cannot cross it. Or is it closed? I don't... I never know which way is which for a bridge. Um... There's a steam vent over here. That's... That inspires trust. Looks like that's been breaking open because of the tremors here. Broke the path and they just put a plank over it. Alright, let's just get to the other side before we fall. Looks like we can redirect steam towards that bridge, so maybe it'll lower it. Uh, that's not good.
Wasn't me. Wasn't me. I didn't do anything. Nobody can prove anything. Here, I'll... See? Nothing happened. Nobody touched this switch. Yikes, well that's not good. And yeah. Um, oh god, more tremors. I really don't feel safe anymore now. Yeah, obviously that didn't happen in the original. <laughs> and um, Cyan released a demo of uh, Riven that included most of what we've seen so far. And little else. And this was the first big surprise for me playing because, yeah, you see some things that are different. Oh, there's a different machine there. A lever has moved. But this? I was not expecting this to happen. <laughs> that was quite a shock. Well, um, there's tracks going there from multiple places, so hopefully we can still get there if we need to. Hopefully that wasn't important. Yikes. Well, that was quite a shock, I would say. Really letting us know, this is not your parents' ribbon. I mean, it, it is and it isn't. It, I, I kind of said this in my... In my... Uh, post I did on my page to, to let people know that I was going to do this Let's Play. It's like, it's very obviously Riven. It looks like Riven. It sounds like Riven. But with the changes, it's also not Riven, and it's it's very disconcerting in a way. You get used to it, and on the whole, I like almost all the changes they made. But, uh, it's still weird. It's Riven and it's not. But we'll see where this path leads in the next video. Hopefully not to any more breaking bridges. Also, did you know that in my original Let's Play I didn't even say in the next video and welcome back consistently? I think I did it a few times, but I was still trying to to uh, change things up every time. Which I later just gave up on and just stuck with it, making it the lamest catchphrase that anybody has ever had. <laughs> anyway, we'll continue in the next video.